Hello everyone, my name is Sydney Chamaya and I am from the Pueblo of Acoma, Laguna, and Jemez. I'm also the coordinator for the Department of Native American Affairs. First, I would like you all to thank you. I would like to thank you all for coming here today in celebration of Native American Heritage Month. This afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Michael Lucero. He is from the San Felipe Pueblo. Michael works at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center in Albuquerque, and today he is going to be talking about the 19 Pueblos of New Mexico and the unique differences between them. Before I hand it over to Michael, I want to let everyone know that after this presentation, you will all be receiving an online survey, and if you could all fill that survey out, it helps us with future programming, and we really appreciate it. Now, if everyone could help me welcome Michael Lucero. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. Uh, um, so yeah, thank you for having me. Um, you know, I, uh, so I appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, um, I just wanted to reflect real quick before I get started uh, on all the uh, wonderful things that you know, we do here at the Indian Public Culture Center. Um, so what we do is, uh, you know, we are the gateway to the 19 Pueblos of New Mexico, you know, and, uh, you know, there are 20 Pueblos, uh, when you count Isleta del Sur, which is down in El Paso, Texas. But, um, you know, I get to come here every day and, uh, you know, just kind of share who I am as a uh, Pueblo person, as an indigenous person, and, uh, you know, try to tell our story and represent, you know, all the Pueblos the best that I can. Um, so... A little bit about me, um, you know, Michael Lucero, I'm from the Pueblo San Felipe. Now, prior to uh, coming to the Indian Public Culture Center, um, I spent about 10 years in the military. Um, I have, you know, some tours to uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Bosnia, um, you know, which I was very proud to be a part of. Uh, and, you know, but as I transitioned away from that, uh, I spent uh, another 18 years uh, working uh, with young people, and uh, I was a director for juvenile justice programs. And uh, you know, during that time, I made a lot of really meaningful connections with a lot of our uh, um, Pueblo communities, uh, particularly in the Sandoval County area. Um, but that's where I really uh, found myself in a good position to really uh, advocate, you know, for our Pueblo people and uh, to really bridge some disparities and some gaps uh, between, you know, the outside agencies and into the Pueblos to really ultimately, um, you know, find some common ground to properly uh, serve our uh, young people. And uh, that's where I made a lot of uh, connections with um, tribal leadership, tribal government people. And, um, you know, to this day, I, I uh, you know, try to um, really foster those relationships and kind of keep them uh, strong and, and, and going. Um, and so when I uh, retired from that, I came here to the Indian Public Cultural Center and um, I am the uh, director of guest and entrepreneur experiences. And uh, really what that means is uh, uh, I oversee our guest experience team. Um, I also uh, you know, oversee the art missions, our tours, um, as well as our membership program, our volunteer program, and our new uh, entrepreneurship program. And um, I'll share a little bit more of what the entrepreneurship program is uh, later on into my presentation. Um, but uh, so anyway, that's a little bit about me and, and, and what I do here. And uh, trust me, it's really a, a wonderful place to be. So whenever you all get a chance, if you're in the Albuquerque area, please do stop on by. Um, even though, uh, you know, our indigenous uh, people and our public people are, are, are no charge. It's free admissions. Um, you know, some of them, you know, been here quite a few times. It's uh, really nice to kind of go through and, uh, you know, spend time at each of the exhibits and just really, uh, you know, uh, going through the, 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 the exhibits, the reading material, and to just to let things kind of resonate and, you know, sit with you even though that, that that's my, you know, that might be who you are, you know, and, and you live it all the time. It's nice to kind of see um, what's on display so that um, 
you know, we try to tell a story of representing all the Pueblo people um, in, in one, you know, story throughout the museum. Um, it's a little bit challenging to do, but, you know, I, I think it's really well represented because there's just so much to offer when you break down um, each Pueblo and really try to share their uniqueness, uh, you know, to the public. Um, even though there's some Pueblos that speak a different, you know, language and dialect, um, that's also really unique. But we have a section in our museum that really uh, um, does that. It's interactive. It greets um, our guests um, from by each Pueblo uh, in that in their language. And um, so, yeah, so like I said, we, we try to do our best to uh, represent all the Pueblos. Um, but before I get and move further into this presentation, um, you know, what we'd like to do um, as sort of leading by example, when we have, um, you know, our meetings or, or uh, um, any kind of gatherings here at our uh, uh, workplace, um, we do start with uh, prayer. And um, so what I'll do is uh, I'd like to offer, you know, a bit of a prayer and thank you and, and uh, you know, offer you all blessings uh, for this, you know, wonderful day. And uh, just really be thankful to, you know, our creators and the path that we are, you know, on and, and ask that we, we be guided and, uh, you know, and, and be thankful for, you know, where we're at in time and, and just to continue to be resilient uh, in this, um, you know, battle of you know, the pandemic, you know, trying to get back to some normalcy and, and just offering some thanks and, you know, where we're at with, uh, with things and, and asking that things continue to improve for all of us. And of course, you know, where you're at, you know, you all are uh, um, in a place where you are working hard, you know, you're furthering your education and, you know, trying to get to a place where you're achieving your goals. And it's such a balance that um, the things that we have to do daily and, uh, you know, it's just honoring the work that you all do and uh, that we all, you know, are a part of. And, uh, you know, it's really neat how we can create these, you know, small communities. Uh, you know, we they say, what, six degrees of separation, but sometimes it's really a lot smaller than that. You know, when you um, start venturing out into, into the world, you kind of come across people that, you know, know one another and, and you know I just ask that you uh, you know come with a uh, open mind and open heart and just always try to have them sink and uh, you know approach people as such and uh, you know help one another out so let me go ahead and uh, start this with prayer <laughs> Shortan, 
Shram eo gitta gada rasa ichtiyotvara japa istaya harsa kogoeme eo shroon zin. I thank you uh, for that. Um, so what I like to do now is um, kind of just give you a rough um, layout of what um, we offer here at the uh, Indian Public Cultural Center. Um, uh oh, something happened. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, had a glitch on my computer window open up by uh, <laughs> accident. But uh, um, anyway, um, what we offer here at the uh, Indian Public Culture Center, like I said, is is a uh, is a, is the doorstep, the gateway to all the nineteen pueblos, and um, you know we have it laid out to where uh, we tell the story of the pueblo people, you know, from our origins and um, how we. Uh, um, started out and basically where we are at now. You know, the layout of our museum talks about early history and then it does go into, um, you know, the Spanish settlers coming in and, um, you know, how uh, the Pueblos have um, the churches with that Spanish influence. And uh, there's a, a portion that talks about the different saints on all the Pueblos. And, and that you know, transitions to the Pueblo Revolt. And um, we have a section that kind of talks about uh, Pope and transitions from there to the uh, Albuquerque uh, Indian School. And it highlights some things about the boarding schools here in the Albuquerque area. Um, and it's sort of fitting that, um, you know, this land here in Albuquerque, uh, um, you know, there used to be an Indian school here on this property. And um, so it, it, it really uh, connects people when they uh, kind of experience that exhibit and kind of read about it and just learn more, more information on it. Then our museum transitions to a section called the, uh, the Art Through Struggle. And um, it's a rotating exhibit. And what that means is it's uh, a, a temporary exhibit which will usually be up for about six months to a year. And we feature Pueblo artists that um, talk about their struggles or their community struggles through art. And currently we have um, an artist from Acoma Pueblo who uh, talks about like the uranium mines. And so, um, she talks, uh, well, she's a very expressive in her artwork, and there's a lot of really uh, good detail about um, those struggles and, and where they're at uh, with the community. And so, um, you know, like I said, if you get a chance, you know, come by and experience that. Um, down at our south end of our uh, museum, you know, we have uh, rotating exhibits. And um, what we have up right now is called the uh, Heritage, um, and it's in honor of Women's uh, Heritage Month. And so we have uh, Native American women Pueblo artists that have their art featured and showcased. And um, each piece, of course, goes into detail of, of what it is and what inspired the artist. But it's a really uh, well put together uh, exhibit. And um, that should be up through the rest of the year. Um, and then that transitions to our um, relocated uh, exhibit. Uh, there's a, a movie that we showed um, about a month ago or so uh, called The Exiles. And it was filmed in the 1950s. And, um, and, and it was released, I believe, in the 70s. Um, but what it did was it, um, it highlights some storylines from... Native Americans who were part of the uh, relocation uh, act. And uh, what, what that's about is, um, you know, back, back in the 50s, you had uh, Pueblo people or Native Americans who were uh, taken from their reservations or their tribes and uh, enrolled into this work program. And they were relocated to large cities like San Francisco. 
um, for example. And the movie really uh, uh, in our exhibit highlights um, some of the things that um, they did, you know, while they were out there. Uh, many of them, of course, missed home. You know, they felt lost, but they came together and formed, you know, small communities away from home. And, you know, I know that uh, growing up, I heard, um, you know, some of my relatives talk about, you know, being out in San Francisco with, you know, other relatives. And, and I, at the time, I didn't know, you know, what that was about. I just kind of thought that they were all on vacation together or whatever. But later on, I found out that, you know, they were part of this relocation program. And, um, and so they did, they had to form communities and uh, little groups to sort of, you know, stay together. And uh, the, one of the highlights in the movie is, you know, they, uh, they come together at night and, and, you know, they get their drums and they, uh, you know, are singing, you know, because they are trying to be who they are, you know, in, in the city and just not really lose that cultural connection or that cultural component that they, uh, you know, have uh, embedded within who they are. And so um, that was really uh, neat for the film to kind of capture a little bit of that. But um, yeah, that's uh, one of our um, rotating exhibits is it's called Relocated. Um, I think one of the uh, really unique things about that is when we um, did the opening for that exhibit, um, we had um, created this um, digital um, piece to it, which there's a screen that shows um, um, people who uploaded pictures of them being, you know, not really relocated, but relocating themselves either through jobs or school. And um, we had them hashtag um, um, relocated or, or Pueblo Feast Day. And, and what it did was um, it up would upload their pictures on what it looked like for them being away from their Pueblo, you know. And so we had people, uh, pictures come through from like, you know, California or Colorado. Um, there's people who are away from home, but just, you know, honoring uh, who they are as Native people and, and just kind of showing images of them, you know, either their feast day table or, you know, in their, uh, you know, uh, uh, traditional attire and um, just sharing that with people. And so um, I thought that was a really nice touch to uh, really connect with people who had, um, you know, who are currently relocated and just kind of be a part of that exhibit. And then in the South Rotunda area, um, that one changes uh, quite frequently, usually within about 60 to 90 days. And currently what we have up, we just have the opening on Saturday, uh, and it's one of my favorite exhibits, but it's the uh, American uh, Indian, um, or American wait, Native American Student Art Show, sorry. And um, it's designed for kids through, you know, um, as early as kindergarten, K through 12, um, can enter their artwork. Um, and uh, it's showcased in our South Rotunda and the exhibit pieces are, of course, are for sale. All uh, prices are designated by the, the students that create them. And uh, there's always a thing. So this year was um, surviving COVID. What did you do during, you know, uh, the pandemic? And, uh, you know, we have um, some really nice art submissions from um, our uh, Native American students from, you know, the 19 Pueblos um, featured. And so um, I think what makes it special is, you know, the, the teachers, the art teachers and parents really support and encourage their children. And uh, it's very evident when, you know, the parents are here during the opening or, um, you know, when you can have a a young one who uh, displays their art and they're asking, you know, 300 for it and, you know, their mom and dad come in and buy it, you know. Um, I think that's really uh, <laughs> touching that they do that, but very uh, supportive. And um, the work that they do is just absolutely amazing. And so, um, again, please come visit and <laughs> yeah, you'll be able to uh, see that. Um, so that's just, you know, a brief rundown of how, you know, our museum is... Um, uh, laid out. Um, but the different departments that we have here, um, we have a, uh, a library and archive here uh, on, the, on the downstairs floor. 
Um, it's a hidden gem. Sometimes some people will come to the museum and not know that we have the library, but it is uh, unique, only one in the nation from what I know that really has a lot of um, Pueblo archive material and um, a lot of literature that pertains to uh, the Pueblos. So it's really uh, popular with um, many um, people continuing their education in Native American studies or who want to learn more about their Pueblo or certain historical events that may have occurred on their Pueblos. And so, um, um, like I said, it's a hidden gem It because it, um, it doesn't get enough, uh, I think, traffic flow, in my opinion, just because of the location. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's downstairs at our museum. And uh, again, yeah, take advantage if you're able to come um, and check it out. We also have um, our collections. Uh, we have, um, wow, I want to say three, four rooms um, full of um, museum uh, archived collections. And um, it's pieces from all the Pueblos. And, um, you know, it takes uh, a lot of care and upkeep to preserve a lot of the, um, the pieces that are there. And um, what can become challenging is um, um, so many people come across uh, Pueblo art or, you know, they, uh, they inherit it, uh, some art pieces, and they try to return it <clears throat> back to the Pueblo and they come here first. And, um, you know, and so it's very uh, hard to always accept certain things because we try to do it in, in support of each particular Pueblo, but um, we really don't have like a liaison per Pueblo to sort of um, validate some of the art or um, help us sort of distinguish what's worth keeping and what's not. Um, I, I think there's a little bit of a challenge there too because we have so many Pueblo artisans that produce, you know, um, a lot of the, the, the traditional potteries and, and jewelries and things like that. And so there's so much of it out there that when someone comes across a certain piece, you know, they're trying to do the right thing by bringing it back here, but there's so much in circulation that, um, you know, we really try to uh, preserve really some of the older uh, pieces that are out there. Uh, so our collection um, department has their hands full, so to speak, with going through a lot of these things. And, you know, we get some unique donations that uh, come back and, uh, and then she's tasked to go through everything, you know, and, and, you know, obviously administer proper care and handling. And then, of course, keeping the rooms at certain temperature um, to, to really house a lot of these stuff is a challenge. Um, and of course, we have uh, um, our cultural um, dance programs. And so we, um, we look for cultural dance programs to you know, be a part of um, our experiences when uh, um, we have our guests here. So right now, it's seasonal. Um, we have dance performances on the weekends only right now. Um, when it's summertime, we have dance performances on Friday, um, and we also have them uh, two times a day. Um, during the winter hours, um, we go to one dance group, and typically they can perform two times a day. Um, so that way, the, um, our, our guests who come visit, they can experience um, some cultural dance uh, dances here at the center. Um, one of the um, nice things to have right now is many of our Pueblos are still closed. And, you know, some of the Pueblos are having some traditional dances in moderation and um, a lot of it is not open to the public. And so when we have our dance performances here, it's really nice to be able to, um, you know, let our guests know that, you know, they are being treated to something um, you know, special and, and unique that, you know, they can't get at the Pueblos right now. And, um, you know, it's really um, 
again, brings us back to being the gateway of, of all the Pueblos. Um, and um, um, with the, uh, the Pueblo dance uh, um, programs, you know, all our um, Pueblos or Pueblo dance group has to come through. They fill out an application and, uh, you know, we authenticate what they do and um, we support them in, you know, delivering uh, authentic and genuine, um, you know, dance performances for our guests so that, um, you know, we represent all the Pueblos again to our, our, our best capabilities, you know, with authenticity and sincereness. Um, and we also have a, a daily artist program. So uh, our daily artisans, they set up in our courtyard and um, you know, they offer their crafts to, uh, to the public, to our guests. And that's something that we also uh, um, authenticate and, uh, you know, we validate their work. Um, you know, we, we want it to be genuine to our guests and authentic to our guests. And, um, you know, so we value the work that our artisans do. And, you know, for our guests that do purchase from them, you know, we want our guests knowing that they are purchasing, you know, items made, you know, um, by our, our artisans and, you know, that their work is signature and it's authentic. And so if there's any, if there's ever any issues with any of the uh, product that is bought, you know, that our guests can come back and we know who we can connect them with to sort of resolve any um, issues or like if there's a necklace that breaks and somebody might want, you know, it fixed, um, you know, we can connect them to the right artists that um, sold it for them. And so um, with that daily artist program, um, we decided to um, create programming for entrepreneurs. And uh, we are looking to build um, what is going to be a maker space for our artisans. And um, it is going to be free for them to use. Um, and we will have the, the tools, the equipment that, you know, they can come in and, and if they're traditional potters, they can make their potteries and can fire them in our kilns. If they are, you know, woodworkers or silversmiths, we will have the tools that um, they can use to enhance their business, to enhance their uh, um, customer and audience growth and their networking abilities. Um, we also will have programming so that they can, um, you know, create a website if need be um, to create uh, outreach material like business cards, flyers. And uh, we will also um, uh, hub, um, you know, markets and, and things like that. So we, um, we're also looking to um, bring in a, a commercial greenhouse. Uh, to help out uh, indigenous uh, farmers and, and ag, um, you know, people interested in the agricultural uh, business. And so um, um, we will sort of have that tie into um, our makerspace. Uh, and we already have some programming that we've done workshops with and um, um, community conversations with, and it's called IPI. And it's the Indian Pueblo Innovative Entrepreneurship Program. And um, um, we also do a lot of um, work with the film industry. Um, coming up on the 15th and 16th, if you are uh, interested, we will be having a, um, um, a film workshop with uh, our partners at, uh, with Red Nation. And um, their workshop will be based around um, who writes the story matters. Um, you know, we have a lot of uh, um, indigenous and Native American people in the film industry right now. And we really um, want that to be genuine and authentic. We also want to support those that are interested in pursuing that uh, career um, that they have, um, you know, the network that we can uh, tie them in with. Uh, a few months back, we had a, a really successful workshop, just introducing people to um, the industry, you know, what jobs are available, you know, behind the scenes, on set, um, you know, and, and just really having people come in and talk to our um, 
participants um, with what the film industry has to offer. And, um, you know, we had like Mo Plenty from Yellowstone. We've had the writers from Spirit Rangers. Uh, we had a few um, VIPs from Netflix and Warner Brothers join in on our uh, conversations to really um, um, let our participants know what the industry is like. And so that's something that we will uh, continue forward with and, and then just uh, keep adding to um, the building blocks of our programming. Um, let's see, we also have a, a really uh, great education program. Um, we have a, a board that sort of encompasses this uh, um, indigenous wisdom curriculum. Um, that indigenous wisdom curriculum, you know, as you know, is, is sort of um, going into all the schools now. And it's uh, uh, supported and endorsed by the uh, state education department to really bring that to the schools so that um, they are teaching history correctly, you know, um, based on this indigenous wisdom curriculum. Um, but we also offer to organizations um, like somewhat of a cultural ambassador program so that those that, you know, work with um, Native American students or indigenous populations that they sort of uh, receive some cultural sensitivity training. And uh, we have quite a few organizations that reach out to us that um, wish to have that training so that they can better support um, and have understanding for the uh, Native American population that might be working in their organization. Um, one of the things that we're currently working on with that is um, the uh, Albuquerque Police Department reached out to us um, to really help bridge some of their gaps that they have when uh, dealing and working with uh, Native Americans, uh, whether it's in the office or, you know, on a response. Uh, they also want to just make sure that they are respectful to, um, you know, those individuals that they uh, come into contact with. And, um, and that's something that uh, we just started. And so we plan on, again, enhancing um, that program as we uh, go through um, the different phases of, of delivering it. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, through our education program, let's see, we offer yearly um, webinars, uh, classes. And so we are just wrapping up what is called the Pueblo Seeds Program. And the uh, Pueblo Seeds Program really um, is targeted towards, you know, our Pueblo farming. And one of the unique things about our resilience garden that we have here is that the seeds that get planted here are generational seeds, meaning that they've been, you know, passed down for generations through our Pueblos. And uh, when it's time to plant, all of our staff you know, will go out to the garden and we you know, go through just like we would normally uh, on our Pueblos um, and, and approach um, planting in that particular fashion, you know, where we, we pray and uh, we prepare the garden, prepare the soil, and, you know, we make it a, a nice day where, um, you know, we are gathered as staff to, um, you know, prepare the garden. Then um, our staff work, you know, throughout the year, our education staff and, and with volunteers um, work to maintain the garden um, throughout the year. But we have different uh, classes and webinars that we showcase the foods that um, come from our garden. Of course, they're all indigenous. And so we will like, um, uh, we have videos that I believe are on YouTube um, where we've showcased uh, cooking from the Ornos and the Pontes and, and um, demonstrating what that looks like. And then just uh, having, um, you know, informative videos that show uh, indigenous cuisine um, with all the ingredients, you know, and doing basically the, the farm to, you know, plate uh, concept. And, um, uh, you know, our education team does a really great job with um, um, sharing that with um, our, our guests. Um, we also, uh, our education team currently will transition to um, 
um, stories by the fireside. And, um, uh, you know, we're, we are approaching the holiday season. So, um, you know, it's, it's meant for a time to, you know, be indoors and be close with family and, and close to the fire and just, you know, like how we would receive those stories a long time ago, but just kind of keeping it going and just being gathered by the, by the fireside and, and sharing different stories. And so uh, we are in the season of that, and uh, we have quite a few coming up uh, in the month of uh, November and December. Um, a lot of them are offered uh, online, so uh, look for them on our uh, social media platforms or on um, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, I believe. Uh, or you can find uh, the links for those on our website, too. You can register to uh, be a part of that. Um, let's see. One of the um, um, nice things about the uh, education department is they really run with um, the seasons of growth. Um, and what they do is we, um, um, you know, talk about, again, the garden or just finding opportunities that with the change in, you know, the solstice and the seasons that we share what goes on, you know, with uh, Pueblo life. And we use that as an opportunity to, um, um, sort of teach uh, Pueblo ways of life to our guests or any participants that register. Um, and so that's usually uh, really popular uh, with our guests. Um, let's see, what else can I share? Um, oh, we were just in the news the other day um, with one of our uh, SEEDS program wrapping up. We do a lot of collaboration and partnerships, of course, with the Pueblos and uh, the Flower Hill Institute was here um, just this past week. And um, you know, they're talking about um, uh, shimmy ball. And um, the, the, the really neat thing about that is, is that's how um, our Pueblo people basically um, you know, took care of the ground, the soil, um, and they do it either right before, right after harvesting or right before it's planting time. And the idea that, you know, some people reference that ball as an earth ball. And uh, inside that, that ball, you know, is different seeds. And uh, it's like the game of hockey, just with no goal. And the idea was to try to, you know, keep that ball on one side of the, you know, fields or the, or the village or Pueblo. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the other group tries to kind of uh, move it back the other way. And, um, you know, with the, with the sticks and, and the movement of the ground and, and you know, it was just that was the way to, you know, soften the dirt and just really uh, get things ready for uh, planting time. And so um, our education department um, um, did that with the part, uh, with, with partnership from the Flower Hill Institute from Hamas. And uh, they offered that in uh, one of our classes. And so that was really uh, neat to see uh, on the news. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to share. So, um, again, you know, when I uh, talked about the, the 19 pueblos of New Mexico, um, you know, we again have that um, 20th pueblo in, in El Paso, Texas, which is uh, uh, stems from Isleta. So, there is Isleta del Sur. So, part of our um, um, All Pueblo Council of Indian Governors, um, you know, they uh, are recognized there as well. Um, and then we also support our uh, other indigenous communities here in New Mexico. You know, we, uh, we have a lot of um, support and guests that come from the Navajo Nation, that come from our uh, Apache communities as well. And, um, you know, I think that's why uh, this past Indigenous Peoples Day was just really a record, record day for um, how many people came. And, um, you know, if you were able to come in, or I think it streamed live on our social media, but we, you know, had the Apache, uh, uh, White, uh, White Mountain Apache Crown dancers here. We had Aztec dancers here and several of our Pueblo uh, dancers that were able to uh, come out and just offer dances throughout the entire day. Um, and this was, of course, our second one. And back in 2019 was uh, our inception to uh, 
have that there as it, you know, passed through the state for it to be recognized as a holiday uh, and replaced, you know, Columbus Day. And so in 2020, you know, obviously it was stay at home and um, 2021, you know, there people are, you know, sticking their head out of the woodworks and, and they were able to come. And it was really, um, you know, really nice to have a large crowd, full house. And, uh, you know, we take our safety uh, precautions, um, you know, seriously, but we, we really, uh, I think, have done a good job to create a safe environment, you know, for our staff, for our daily artisans, our dance groups, and, and our guests. So it, it really um, allowed, you know, for that to happen. Um, so we're really thankful for that. Um, let's see. Oh, we also have um, new, newly uh, added to our nonprofit uh, part of our organization is the uh, Indian Pueblo uh, Kitchen. Uh, it's our restaurant here. Um, and um, it is very unique. Um, same with our my garden. I think I mentioned that, you know, when we have a change in our solstices and our seasons, that our menu changes as well. Um, not entirely, but there'll be a few you know, unique items that uh, will pop up. And it, the idea is, is that the things that were uh, consumed by our ancestors when seasons would change, the foods that were available, those things we wanted to sort of feature and, um, and, and highlight. And so um, our chefs do a really great job of, you know, being creative with the, the menu. And um, we always look for, you know, forward to seeing what, you know, what will be new as the seasons change. Um, our menu, uh, you know, we, we do a really great job of keeping it um, um, indigenous. And so um, the menu items are just really wonderful. They're delicious. And so if you have a chance, please come on by. Um, the other thing I'm excited about, too, is we will be developing a teaching kitchen. And we're going to kick that off next year. And so we will have, uh, our plan is to have a cohort of five or six. We are in the process of purchasing uh, cooking stations that we will have in, uh, in a section of our uh, patio. Our patio does enclose during the winter time. So it's not, you know, it's cold and uh, we call it the fire room at that point. But um, we have a, a section that we are going to dedicate to five, uh, five to six uh, stations. They're of course portable and um, you know they can be moved around but the idea is to uh, um, bring in uh, entrepreneurs and, and people who are interested in culinary arts and uh, it will be a cohort so there will be a series of you know classes that um, we offer you know from our, our chefs but also uh, guest chefs that will be coming in and uh, <coughs> being able to offer that um, you know, to um, basically everyone, you know, you got to sign up and of course register, but you know, we're excited to uh, launch that and uh, that'll be coming in, uh, in the up and coming year. Um, so I, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I have a few slides that I want to share with you all. Um, and also a, um, let's see, a dance performance. So let me go ahead and uh, um, do that. Uh, let's see. I need you to allow me to share. There we go. And uh, let me see. All right. What I will do is I will uh, share this video of our cultural educator, John Jahadi. Kawachi, Keshe, 
and greetings from the Egypt Formal Cultural Center. We are here today to commemorate all the Native American Alaska Native Heritage Month. And we just want to take this time reaching out to you on a particular Michael, we're not able to hear the video. Uh oh. Can you see that now? We can see it. I just don't know like why it's not letting it um play the sound because a little bit like whenever you first played it, we were able to hear the sound. All right, let me see. Someone did um put on the um, on the chat that maybe we can turn on the captions on the YouTube captions. Maybe that will help. Can you see it on your end? The, I can see the video. I'm just not able to hear hear it. The, the button with the CC is the captions. There we go. So now we can read the captions. <laughs>
All right. Um, let me go ahead and uh, see if I can, it'll allow me to share my other video. Um, <clears throat> Michael, just as an yes. FYI, um, uh, just as an FYI, it is two fifty four. Just for time purposes okay okay no that works for me actually. because of course we want to hear your beautiful singing so i'm excited <laughs> about that all right <laughs> i'll skip that video um let me uh stop sharing then there's really um well i have a few more slides that, that you all can view um let me see Are you still able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Right. I think um, um, it should give you the option to stop sharing the screen. Okay. So I wanted to share a couple of things. Um, this is new to us. Um, so we have a, uh, a balloon. Um, so Rainbow Riders own the balloon. And uh, what we do is um, they sort of promote the Indian Public Cultural Center for us. And uh, a couple neat uh, facts about this balloon is um, I, I designed it uh, with the help, of course, of my team here at the, uh, the center. And um, we have, like, on our website uh, detail uh, about, like, what the designs mean and everything. Um, and the name of the balloon, uh, Iani, that uh, means blessings and caress. So the name Iani on the horizon, you know, of course, blessings on the horizon. And um, this balloon flies literally about two to 250 times throughout the year. Uh, it doesn't just fly during balloon fiesta time. So um, if you're in the Albuquerque area, you might be able to catch it uh, when it comes in. And then this is just um, a, a really neat um, um promotional thing that we have here. We have stickers and we have shirts. Uh, and of course it's the, uh, the New Mexico state, um, you know, outlined um, around all the Pueblos of New Mexico. And so um, and it's also available online uh, through our Indian Pueblo store. Um, but I think it's a really cool, um, you know, art artwork that was done to really, um, you know, represent all the uh, Pueblos. Um, uh, let me see, let me stop sharing. And all right. Okay. So you all want to hear me sing now? <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, yes. All right. Um, so of course this uh, song will be in, in Karis. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's um, fitting uh, for, you know, when we're sort of trying to come out of this pandemic and, you know, we are amongst people again. Um, but some of the words that you know might might be familiar uh, to to a lot of uh, to a lot of us, but um, words in there like amu, amu amu is like to really uh, deeply care for someone, and uh, you know hopa is like everyone, and 
Sayok in means like my friends or friends. And, um, you know, it's just that, that it's good to see one another. And, um, you know, that, um, and the song that you know, I offer blessings um, on your journey, on our journey, um, as we, you know, move forward in life. So um, you'll hear that word Iani in there, um, which again, the translation is, is blessings. Um, so let me uh, grab my little drum here. Hopefully, uh, let me know if, 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 if the sound is, you know, too much, then I can use something else. All right, let's see. <clears throat> How does that sound? Okay. Not too loud? Yes, it sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Can't hear you. Sorry, we got so excited, but 
<laughs> We're clapping for everyone in the chat. <laughs> hey, Don, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yes. Michael, we do have one question and then Sydney will continue with the closing. Okay. All right. Um, so the question is, um, what is the most rewarding part of your job? Oh, um, I think being connected to um, all the people that work here. Um, I, I think that um, we have a really, um, a really uh, sincere team. Um, I think everyone's really helpful. And so we have good representat representations of all the Pueblos. And um, I think they really bring that uniqueness from their Pueblo. And of course, they offer that, you know, hospitality. So it really um, shines in their delivery with, you know, offering customer service and support because it goes both to our guests, but also in-house, you know, to make sure that, you know, we um, um, deliver a good experience, but that we also are taking care of one another. So I think that's probably the most rewarding thing. I can't hear you. <laughs> Can you hear us now? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you, Michael, for that amazing presentation. And thank you for your service as well. And on behalf of the Multicultural Affairs, we would like you to present with this Native American Heritage t shirt. Woo! Ah! <laughs> thank you again. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. And come visit us here at IPCC. Yeah. And so, okay, before everyone leaves, our next event for Native American Heritage Month is going to be Generational Female Empowerment Through Fashion with Doreen Nez, and she is from the Navajo Nation. Um, this event will be on campus on November 15th at 2 p.m. in the Sandia Room in the Cub here on Eastern Campus. Lastly, also, do not forget to fill out the online surveys that you all will be receiving. And thank you, and you guys all have a good afternoon. Michael, just before we do leave, I want to make sure that we answer all the questions. So we do have, uh, I don't know if you're able to pull up the chat where you could see the questions. Um, Um, let's see. So let's see, there's one. What words do you have for those of us who are white and feel guilty about racism? <laughs> um, <laughs> I r really, I think, um, um, you know, if you're, you know, have that guilt, you know, it, it's, it's about being the change. You know, and there's that, that quote from Gandhi, you know, be the change that you want to see in the world. And, um, you know, it really starts from there. I think how you, how you feel within your heart and your mind, if you sort of bring that out and share that, um, there really shouldn't be those uh, feelings if it's sincere and if it's really from the heart. And it's, it's tough to, you know, balance, you know, but it, it shouldn't be. Again, if that's where you're sort of, um, you know, driving yourself, that's the, the life that you are walking, um, you know, just to be open. And, um, you know, we are all learning things um, as we, you know, navigate this, you know, this earth, you know, on our journey. Um, and so um, just to be open to um, understanding and, um, you know, I think that'll uh, lead you to good places. Let's see, is there anything else that I missed? I think there was one about pronunciation about the Pueblo. Pueblo. So Pueblo, of course, it's a Spanish word, uh, Spanish word for town. Um, and that's how a lot of the, the names came about, you know, from the uh, conquistador and, you know, Spanish settlers coming through. And uh, you know, that's how, uh, you know, Catholicism was uh, 
introduced, pushed on, however you want to look at it. Um, and so there's a few Pueblos that have, have gone away from that, you know, that really want to be identified with um, how they pronounce, um, you know, their, you know, reservation, you know, or, you know, home, you know, in their language. Um, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's a tough transition, you know, but um, again, it's one of those things, if you practice it and that's kind of their, their wishes, then, you know, be supportive of that. Um, Tiwa Pueblo is, is a good example. You know, they, uh, uh, Santo Domingo, but, um, you know, they've, they've asked and they want that change, you know, to be known as Tiwa Pueblo. Same thing with uh, San Juan, you know, Oke okay, Awinge. Um, and even like Zuni, Zuni does uh, not uh, do a Pueblo feast day. Um, and the way their church is set up, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, designed where it honors the culture um, of the Zuni people and, and not, um, you know, Catholicism or, you know, that type of religion. So, um, but yeah, so that, that it's, it's Pueblo, Pueblo, meaning town in Spanish. Okay. And once again, thank you everyone for attending. And also please do not forget to fill out the surveys. Like we, like I said, it's, it's good for us for our future programming. And so, yeah. And so you all have a good afternoon.